to. You were on Scarborough Country um, a couple of years ago at the nighttime show. And uh, let's watch this and get your reaction. This week? Let's bring a little light to this, uh, the, instead of all heat, let's bring a little light to this conversation light and talk about heat. trans. Light only comes uh, the, heat. Okay, th it's thank you so much. Uh, uh, Christopher, Jerry, I uh, light, I hold on. Guys, stop. God bless us all. Just stop and let's have a meaningful conversation well, don't instead me of people talking on top don't of each other. Don't invite me on and tell me to uh, keep quiet. Don't well, Christopher, do you know, why, don't, why don't you let other people talk for a second, you. okay? You invited me okay, to so anyway, not Matt, to listen to uh, yours. Okay, well, you know what, Christopher? I'll never make that mistake again. Fair Matt, here's, here's the question, Merry okay? Christmas. Merry Christmas and good night. Your, your reaction to seeing yourself. I think I left that one. I think I actually walked out of that one. I thought, look, either have me on, ask my view, or don't. But don't tell me what to say, don't tell me what you think all the time. I actually corrected Mr. Scarborough. I think I improved him slightly as a, as a host and, um, and as a, 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 a talk show person. And he made an obvious mistake. Um, and you know, everyone gives themselves permission to behave absurdly when religion is mentioned. He's just another one of those who do. By the way, when are we going to mention my new paperback version of my anti-God book? Uh, when are you going to put the title and everything on the screen? We'll, we'll when are we going to say find bookstores everywhere? We'll do, it. <laughs> we'll do it shortly. We'll get closer to your book on this clip with Anderson Cooper when you appeared on there and uh, talked about the death of Jerry Falwell. I don't know if you remember this or not. I remember the, the event quite well, yeah. Here it is. Christopher, I'm not sure if you believe in heaven, but if you do, do you think Jerry Falwell is in it? No, and I think it's a pity there isn't a hell for him to go to. What is it about him that brings up such vitriol? The empty life of this ugly little charlatan proves only one thing, that you can get away with the most extraordinary offenses to morality and to truth in this country if you'll just get yourself called reverend. Who would, even at your network, have invited on such a little toad to tell us that the attacks of September the 11th were the result of our sinfulness and were God's punishment if they hadn't got some kind of clerical qualification. People like that should be out in the street shouting and hollering with a cardboard sign and selling pencils from a cup. I don't know why I was so lenient on the little rat bag. Um, he said, he came on the television while the, the, the downtown Manhattan was still smoldering. There were cell phones screeching under the rubble, and people still alive. And he said, this is because we allowed divorce and homosexuality. The hell with him. What I went on to say is that if he could have been given an enema, he could have been buried in a matchbox. And that's what I didn't get time to say on Mr. Cooper, but I got time to say later on. That's what I meant to say. How, how much of what you say is calculated? None. I mean, I mean, it's meant, I mean, in the sense of being, in, it's not done for effect, if that's what you mean. Well, I, mean not I don't say anything. I, I, no, it's a very good question. I ask myself a lot of the time because I'm often on the, on the telly as it were, and on the radio and I often have a book to sell and I don't want to suspect myself of just being doing, the, doing things for effect. Um, if I ever go further than I mean to and I say something that is... is um, cheap or overstated, I, I always will try and come back and correct myself and say, okay, maybe that was, uh, I, mean, I don't do things just for, you know, you, you're, put, you're, you're pursing your lips and stuff. No, I was just, I actually wanted to. I like to find a gifted phrase if I can and try and make it stick, make it memorable. I, I really wanted to ask you though, when there was an occasion where you and someone else really were I don't, the word mad doesn't describe it, but you're furious with one another, or you really had a confrontation that was personal and serious and deep. On the air? With anybody, or... any, you know, just in, in, in life. I mean, people that watch television never know how much of it's a gimmick. Uh, exactly, and that's, what, that's where one wants to suspect one's own motives. Um, this will seem odd, but I'll, I'll answer it like this. I, I'm reviewing a book at present um, of Essays by Henry Fairley, perhaps you remember him. Quite good English-born essayist, often in the New Republic, in the, especially in the 80s, 90s. Um, he was a great writer and a great polemicist, but I used to think that sometimes he would feign his, his uh, anger. He would, he would think, you know, I need to get a piece, I need to get paid, I need to, I need to get an article done. He would, he would invent a subject to be 
annoyed about. And I, I just think that that will always show. So I suppose I have to submit myself um, in answering your question, not to my own verdict that you're inviting, but to the, the safekeeping of, of the good taste of the audience. I mean, if the people who read me and watch me, if they think I'm doing this because I just want to make a splash, well, they're, they're entitled to think that. And I would, I would obviously suffer a decline in respect. Um, I don't think, in fact, I give off the impression that I, I do this for a fact. But back to the other part of the question, though. What's the biggest, most serious feud you've had with any individual? And that was real. I mean, that, that they weren't phony and you weren't phony, and it was... <clears throat> I guess it would be with, with uh, Henry Kissinger and his defenders, uh, what I can call to mind of the recent past. I wrote a book saying that I thought he should be arrested and put on trial, and that if he was, he'd be convicted for crimes against humanity and for war crimes. And um, he made a very crude reply to me, on, on television in point of fact, saying that I was everything from a Holocaust denier to a person who trashed Jackie Kennedy. And in fact, on both those charges, as you know, I, I can't be indicted. But I eventually got his lawyers to issue a, an apology about this. And I took it very seriously indeed. And I hated him, hate him. And I hate the, the toadies in the press and, and in the academy and in publishing who've helped to smooth his path. You hate him? Hate them. Hate him. Yeah. And what's the... I can't... I mean, I feel it's an insult that such a person is around, is, is deferred to, is consulted, is treated with politeness in the academy and by, by our profession and, um, and um, in, the, in the publishing industry. I've said Have all you that. ever met him? Yes, I met him two or three times. He's never been induced to speak to me, um, but he's sometimes had to be in the same room it, it, with evident ill grace. I think, no, that's probably been for me the most long-lasting and deep-going and, and most hate-based um, relationship I've, I've had with anybody. You ask about this book. We did not actually ask you on the program to talk about this I book. I know you didn't, but I'm not going to let you get away. That's fine. No, I just, it's, uh, how many copies of Hardback did you sell? Um, a lot, about about 350,000. And, and the title is God is Not Great. It's now in paperback. And what kind of sales do you expect of this? Oh, I would hope even larger because the subject has become even more acute than when I didn't, I didn't broach it. I mean, it broached itself. The, the battle between civilization and civil society and theocracy is becoming every day much more intense and much more urgent. And the number of people who will come now to a public debate on this, I go to do this kind of debate about twice a week now, is growing all the time. I mean, the audience for the argument is, is enormous. Why? Well. I think for two reasons. One is religion is the most interesting subject of all. I mean, if you have a friend you, or an acquaintance, you know an awful lot about them, depending on whether they attribute their presence in the studio to the laws of biology, the laws of nature, the laws of evolution by natural selection, or whether they think that they're here because of a divine plan. It's a big difference, philosophically, morally. And so going into this means you raise all the most interesting, all the most fundamental basic questions. That's the first thing. So it's never a boring discussion. And second, or it shouldn't be, and the second is that at the moment, if you open the newspaper and see how the parties of God are behaving around the world, everywhere from Russia to Iran to even certain parts of the United States where they think they ought to influence the education system, that people are, I think, becoming fed up with being pushed around by um, ordinary mammals who think that they are better than us because they have God on their side. Enough with this. It's a very, it's very insulting. It's very threatening. It's very stupid, and it's becoming. And now we have the chance that apocalyptic weaponry will fall into the hands of messianic states or organizations, Armageddon-type forces. Um, clear and present danger.